The Honourable Member for York Simcoe. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'll be splitting my time with my honourable colleague and friend, the member from Simcoe North, who we actually meet out in the middle of Lake Simcoe in rural Ontario. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak to the 2024 budget on behalf of the hardworking residents of Bradford West Gwillimbury, the Soup and Salad Bowl of Canada, East Gwillimbury, Georgina, and the Chippewas of Georgina Island. After nine years of this Liberal government, Canadians are worse off than ever before. Sadly, this failure of a budget will only make things even worse. The Prime Minister and Finance Minister have refused to listen to common sense and presided over a shrinking middle class and record low levels of national productivity. Prior to releasing this budget, the Finance Minister promised it would be a plan to unlock pathways to the middle class for the next generation. Wow! Can you believe that, Mr. Speaker? The Liberal government used to brag about their ambition to grow the middle class. The Liberal Party's 2015 platform was entitled Growth for the Middle Class. The 2019 platform emphasized forward, a real plan for the middle class. Now here we are in 2024 and instead of looking to grow the middle class, the Liberals are admitting that because of them, the middle class lifestyle which used to be reasonable and attainable expectation for living life in this country is now something that few Canadians will ever enjoy. It seems that in nine years the promise of Canada is gone. This is the day-to-day -day reality facing Canadians. Two-thirds of young Canadians have resigned themselves to being worse off than their parents. Could you imagine? With this budget, instead of restoring that promise for our citizens, the Liberals are sending a clear message to Millennials and Zoomers and everyone else left behind. Tough luck. Guess you should have been born sooner or in better circumstances. But Canadians, both young and old, are well aware that it is, it is the punishing taxes and high spending agenda of this Liberal government is to blame. The policies that have locked Canadians out for so many of those pathways people used to join the middle class. The cost of living is out of control. It has left half of Canadians living paycheck to paycheck. After paying for their everyday expenses, Canadians just don't have any money left over to save. And others are resorting to charities and food banks just to get by. It didn't need to be this way. Common Sense Conservatives have been calling on the Liberal government to restore the promise of Canada and bring home lower costs by axing the tax, building the homes and fixing the budget. Unfortunately, the Liberals didn't ax the tax. In fact, the Prime Minister increased it by 23% on the first of the month, making it so families, rural residents, farmers, small businesses suffer even more. For months, I have been calling on this government to address the unfairness that has excluded rural communities like York Simcoe from the rural top-up. The Liberals insist on classifying them as Toronto, making them pay more in carbon taxes than other Canadians. After ignoring this problem for years, Budget 2024 finally says that the government will look to better define rural areas, but only commits to put forward a proposal to do so later in the year. Talk about a day late and a dollar short. This is just further proof why we have to axe the tax for everyone, everywhere. The Liberals also haven't built the homes. Nine years of this government, a government that promised to lower the price of housing. Now rents, mortgages in Canada have doubled and the middle class Canadians are forced to live in tenant encampments in nearly every city across Canada. 
Even in small towns like mine are seeing the impacts, as all forms of shelter have become unavailable and unaffordable. Budget 2024 won't make things any better. It will certainly not give more it will certainly give more opportunities to Liberal ministers to pose for photo ops, but it won't help Canadians who can't buy a home or can't afford to renew their mortgage. And so, with $40 billion in new spending, budget 2024, it's obvious that this Liberal government has failed to fix the budget. Because this Prime Minister has failed to put a stop to the inflationary deficits and failed to rein in spending. And he will continue to make life worse for Canadians. The Liberals are now spending more on interest, more on debt than health care. More money for bankers than nurses. And it's no wonder there is still no hospital in York Simcoe. To protect our social programs and lower costs, Conservatives have called on the government to cap the spending with a dollar-for-dollar -dollar rule to bring down interest rates and inflation. That would require the government to find a dollar in savings for every new dollar in spending. Instead, the Liberals are misleading Canadians in pretending that the rich would pay for this Prime Minister's spending. But we all know that it is the everyday Canadians, the extraordinary Canadians, not the, lib big, not the Liberal bigwigs and Bay Street billionaires who have been paying the price. The government even admitted in their response to paper order question 2407 this week that they don't even know how many wealthy Canadians have fled the country and are no longer paying, uh, paying taxes. When Canadians look around them at what this country has become, they see this abysmal failures of the Liberals to address the problems that this government created. It's more clear now than ever that this Prime Minister is just not worth the cost. Now, Mr. Speaker, I was recently sent a letter from a constituent of mine, Laura, and I will read it in the record so the government can finally understand the pain they are inflicting on Canadians. She writes, Our family lives in Pefferlaw in a small bungalow. We are a single family income, myself a stay-at-home mom of two, and my husband who works 60 hours a week just so we can survive financially. Today we received our gas bill, and over the months the carbon tax has steadily increased up and up, and now has officially become more than our actual usage. We, like so many others, are struggling. After the bills are paid and groceries are purchased, and Scott, my grocery shop yesterday was $167 for just four bags of groceries. We have nothing left over. I don't, pretend, I don't pretend to know the intricacies of big government, but I am also no feel, fool. I really feel like we and everyone else are being cheated by the Liberals, who rob from the poor to feed the rich because they lack the ability to budget taxpayers' money. We don't go on vacations. We don't eat out or take the kids to the movies. We live like this, apparently, because the Liberals need our money more than we do. These Liberals can choose to keep ignoring the common sense proposals put forward by Conservatives. But it is shameful they are continuing to ignore the plight of everyday Canadians like Laura. Every Canadian knows what a budget is and what it's supposed to do. By, by definition, it's a means to determine your financial goals. With Budget 2024, it is evident the Liberals have no financial goals, no vision, no plan to bring back balanced budgets to our countries and affordability to the people. Their only objective is to spend as much Canadians' money as they can before they are sent packing. The needs of ordinary Canadians be damned. Canada is broken, Mr. Speaker. Canadians are broke. And I'll be voting alongside my common sense conservative colleagues against this budget. Now I'm going to work my way backwards because I know the NDP haven't got a couple questions. The honourable member for London Fanshawe. 
you, Mr. Speaker. I do appreciate that, and uh, I appreciate the uh, the honourable member's uh, speech. Uh, I was actually, I was, I was really quite uh, was happy to hear that. Um, he talked about the fact that this, this government isn't actually making the ultra-rich pay their fair share. Um, that's fascinating. And I do agree that in terms of what we're seeing from this budget, it certainly doesn't go far enough. That, that increase of the uh, inclusion rate for capital gains uh, simply isn't enough. New Democrats have been calling for an increase in terms of the, the uh, excess profit tax, the corporate, uh, the corporate uh, book tax. Um, uh, other taxes. So I was wondering if he would be willing to uh, work with New Democrats to ensure that this government within this budget, maybe he could put forward an amendment, uh, that would actually increase the corporate tax rate like we are seeing in the states so that we're competitive as opposed to being the lowest in the OECD. Member for York Simcoe. Well, I thank my colleague for the question. Mr. Speaker, to bring this back to York Simcoe, it is the farmers, it is the working class, the middle class people that are paying for these deficits. You know, let's look at this. $50 billion in new spending, that is more than we bring in in GST alone. You know, I alluded to talking about York Simcoe doesn't have a hospital. We still don't have a hospital. To my NDP colleagues, we are spending more on the debt than we are on health care. Like, it's unbelievable, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? Qu'est-ce que comment faire à l'honneur de député de Mirabel? Now, no member for Mirabel. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My colleague for York Simcoe is in a party that has been saying for weeks that this government is mismanaging public money and everything's wrong-headed. But yesterday, his leader said in an interview that public, federal public money was being used to pay for housing in Trois-Rivières and Victoriaville, where they want to win seats. And they penalized Montreal, where they don't think they have any hope of winning any seats. Does he, thinks that, does he think that's OK for the Conservative leader to be playing politics with federal funding? Instead of using and and that does it, or is it okay to use political money for p partisan purposes? We can talk about the housing accelerator fund. And interestingly enough, I'm a York Region slash Simcoe County MP. And the northern six municipalities in my riding applied for the housing accelerator fund, Mr. Speaker. And guess what? Got no money. So apparently in York Simcoe, we are too Toronto for the rural top up and actually not Toronto enough for any housing funds. Just want to tell the uh, Sergeant at Arms, maybe these people are taking pictures at the door there, so uh, maybe we can uh, stop that. Uh, questions and comments? Kishore Kamaltara, the Honourable Member for uh, Hamilton East, Tony Creek. Oh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate the speech from my uh, colleague across the way. Uh, the leader of the opposition was in Hamilton several weeks ago as part of his Make Canada Great Again tour, and he talked about dismantling the national housing strategy, a strategy, Mr. Speaker, that has built units in the members' riding. In fact, I know that there were 18 transitional units that were constructed in his riding. Um, Passage House in East Gwillimbury provides shelter services for those people who are in encampments. There was also a youth shelter that was constructed in Sutton. Uh, provided services by Blue Door. And so I wonder why the Leader of the Opposition is so intent on cutting supports for not-for-profits as well as cutting supports for those most vulnerable Canadians who need the services and the facilities uh, in the members' riding. So I can ask him why. The Honourable Member for York Simcoe. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my colleague for the question. You know, I'm trying to make this government understand that... You know, let's take York Simcoe, for example, which we're talking about tonight. And I want to again talk about the rule top-up of the carbon tax. Because this government loves to decide, divide Canadians. And you're dividing Canadians based on geography now, is what you're doing. You know, I went atop the CN Tower with binoculars, and I still couldn't see my riding of York Simcoe with binoculars. But yet this government chooses to classify us as Toronto, the soup and salad bowl of Canada, Mr. Speaker. It's actually unbelievable. 
Uh, before proceeding, I just want to apologize to the House because I did miss that the Honourable Member for Mirabelle was not wearing a tie. And we all know that uh, we should be wearing ties in the House when we're speaking. So just an apology to Honourable Members uh, for missing that.